Bruchim Aboyim. Thank you for coming. Um, lecture today will be on uh, arrogance and its opposite humility. Uh, last week we finished off with the topic of anger, and I thought that it would just follow. As I mentioned last week, that people get uh, angry because of arrogance. It's interesting, God doesn't like it, people don't like it, and for the most part, arrogant people don't care. It's just something that they see as who and what they are, and uh, something they kind of earn or deserve, which is really not the case. We see that God abhors arrogance. He says that he and I, he and I the arrogant person, cannot live in the world together. In fact, on the altar... The two things that were prohibited to be put upon the altar were honey or any fruit juices and leaven. Both made things rise. God abhors anything that has an ego. In fact, we see that the uh, third word in the Torah, in the Bible, is the beginning created God. If you translate the Hebrew literally, God puts his name, Bereshus Bar Elohim, third, to show his humility. And if God is humble, who are we to be arrogant? It's interesting in the uh, most prominent prayer, the most important prayer that we say daily, which is called the Shemona Esrei, the Amida, the 18 prayers, that which we stand. And it really is like the third movement of a symphony. It is the most powerful of all prayers. And what's interesting in a symphony, the third movement is, is loud. It's, it, it comes to a, 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 a crescendo, a point. And yet with us, it's just the opposite. It's the quietest. We do it privately between ourselves and God Almighty, our Father in Heaven. And the ritual is that you bow four times in the saying of the Shemona Esra, which we call tefillah, which is the word for prayer. It's the essence of everything. So an average person bows four times. The Kohen Gadol, the high priest, would bow at the beginning and end of every blessing. The king, the king of Israel, would bow at the first word Baruch and stay bowed until the last word Shalom. The greater the man, the greater the humility. So in Jewish belief, a leader is someone that exudes humility, not arrogance. He understands what it is to lead, and he leads through humility before God and before people. The word ani, I, really can only be used by God. When you say I, the word I, what are you talking about? We constantly change. Cells are being born and dying. New thoughts that we have. God is the same. He does not change. God is all knowledge. That's why we study the Bible, to internalize God's wisdom. But when we use the word I for ourselves, is it is it I that I was was I was a few seconds ago, or the I that I will be in the next few seconds? Because we keep changing. So this term I really cannot be used by a person. It's really a form of arrogance. The best way to 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 deal with people and with conversation about things is not to deal with I, me, or you. But deal with it. And by dealing with it, you're able to talk about something that doesn't get either person competing. What you're trying to do is to deal with the issue at hand. It makes things work much better. And it doesn't become a contest. It becomes a way to solve a problem. You know, it's interesting. They, uh, <laughs> they tell a story of a man who went to go see the Kotzka, a great rabbi. <clears throat> and the man said to this great rabbi, he says, Rabbi, I suffer from arrogance, and I came to see if you could help me. And uh, the Kutzker told him to sit down in his study, off to the side. And it was customary for great rabbis to have audiences with individuals. And he told his sexton to allow the next person who came to see him for his audience. And the man walked in, a farmer. And he looked and he saw this other person sitting there, but the rabbi told him to sit. And the rabbi asked him why he had come. And he said he needed advice. His cow wasn't giving any milk. What could the rabbi tell him? 
And the rabbi turned to this arrogant person and he said, well, tell him what to do. And he says, I know nothing about cows. <laughs> There's nothing I can tell him. And the rabbi began to tell the person how to feed the cow, what to do with the cow, to make sure that the cow's milk would be greater and uh, better. And the man thanked the rabbi and left. Second man walked into the study and he again saw this man off to the side, but the rabbi told him to have a seat. And he said, what brings you? And the man said that I'm having trouble in my business. And I don't know exactly what to do. I'm losing profits. I really don't know how to handle the difficulties that I have. And he explained everything to the Kutzka. And the Kutzka turns to the man and says, well, tell him what to do. And he says, well, I'm really not a businessman. I really don't know exactly what to do. I, I'm befuddled. So the Kutzka tells the man to get there early and to be more conscious of what's going on, to lead his people, to buy better and tells him where and what to do. And the man thanks him and leaves. Sexton brings in a third person. And this man comes in and again sees this person off to the side, but the rabbi tells him to have a seat. And with his eyes filled with tears, the man tells him how he's having difficulty with his children and doesn't know what to do, and he's tried this, that, and the other, and it seems not to work. He's besides himself. And the Kutzka turns to this man and says, well, tell him what to do. And the man says, tell him what to do. I've got the same problems he has. I don't do it with my children either. So the Kutzka tells the man how to be more patient, to treat each child as an individual, gives him all types of advice. The man thanks him and leaves. When the man leaves, the Kutzka turns to this man. He says, I don't know why you're so arrogant. You know nothing. Why would you be arrogant? And in essence, that's really our, all of us. We may have a certain expertise in one thing. It doesn't mean that we know anything. We know something about something. But to walk around arrogant when you think about what you know compared to God, how can a person be arrogant? It doesn't make sense. You don't know enough. Well, today we have a cell phone, so we can ask Siri. Siri seems to know quite a bit. I don't think Siri's arrogant. <laughs> so it's really not for a person to be. It's interesting that Moshe Rabbeinu, most, it really gifts, all the, all the advantages we have are gifts from God. We know that the greatest prophet that ever lived, the Bible tells us, Torah tells us, is Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses, our teacher. And he was called the humblest of all men. And yet we see that he stood up to Dustin and Aviron. We see he stood up to Korach with the rebellion. He stood up to the nation. He wasn't, he wasn't a wimp. He wasn't a pussycat. He was still a strong individual. But yet he was called the humblest of all people. What did that mean? So it's not that Moses, Moses was a fool and didn't know that he had attributes, that he had assets. He just felt, A, compared to God, what, what, what is that? It's like a mound compared to a mountain. It really comes up to nothing, even though that mound is, is higher than level ground. And not only that, Moshe felt that even though he may have been great, if you would have had his attributes, if you were born as he had been, you would have been greater. So he wasn't arrogant about the fact that he had made accomplishments. If anything, he felt he needed to do more. It's interesting, when I get up in the morning, first thing I do is ask God, Thank God, actually, for another day. And the second thing I do is I ask him to be better than yesterday. Because whatever you were yesterday isn't good enough. As long as a man lives, he has what to strive for. So how can you be arrogant? You haven't reached it. And if you have reached it, it's time to leave. Life is a journey, trying to reach the top. And it's something that takes a lifetime to do. It's interesting that arrogance is loud. People that are arrogant, you know they're around. They're telling you all the time. And, but yet, on the same time, it's not that a person, again, it shouldn't be a wimp. So what you have is arrogance, and on the other side of that, that works, is confidence. And confidence is essential. It's important. A person needs to believe that he can be successful. If you think you're a nothing, you're a nothing. Think good, it'll be good. A person needs to have confidence without having arrogance. And it's interesting, confidence is quiet. You see people and there's confidence and that's, that makes you stronger when you're behind them. 
a true leader gives confidence to those who follow him. Not by being arrogant, by the fact that he's confident, not arrogant. It's interesting that arrogance blinds one from the truth. And truth should be more important than being right. People that are arrogant, they're really not interested in truth. They just want to be right. And many times their being right doesn't mean them reaching above you. It's them many times pulling you down below them. There's a prayer in the last portion we mentioned the Shemona Esther, the standing prayer. Sometimes I say it two and three times, just repeat it. The words in Hebrew are Lamkali Nafshi Sidum Vanafshi Ka Afra La Koltia, which translates, Let my soul be silent to those who curse me, and may my soul be like dust to everyone else. It's interesting because the word for silent is not a cherish of someone who's, who's silent or mute. The word is yidom. It's, it's almost, the yidom is really, it's, it's, it's like being inanimate. Because sometimes, you know, if someone says something to you, you may not make a comment, but inside you're brewing and people can see it. But to be an inanimate, to be able to hear someone say something negative about you and not to have to react at all. What an attribute. What, 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 a, what, what a position to be in. Now, some people are cold, so they don't react to anything. But if you're a hot person, if you're a normal person, and somebody says something, your first reaction is to come back and have a certain, me, he's saying that to me, and to react with power and with force. But to have the strength of character, to be lead to Edom, to be totally inanimate, they may have no reaction, to hear it and not react to it, I'm in awe. And that's really what a person needs to do, to be in control of his emotions, not just what he says, that's a level, not to say anything, but to be so strong within yourself that you don't, you realize it's not someone else who defines who you are. To not have to react. And to feel that you're offer, that, that, that you are dust before all other people. That you, that you don't have to prove your worth. If you have it, you, it's yours. You don't have to go around telling people. The second you have to tell someone means you don't have it. And the truth of the matter is, since everything that we have is a gift from God, so what does it prove? It's interesting that Dovin and Melech, King David, was in the mikvah. And he was very upset because he was naked without any good deeds. And then he looked down at his circumcision and he felt better because he at least had the mitzvah, the, the, the commandment of circumcising himself. And the question is, he was an older person. First time he had realized he was naked? First time he realized he had a circumcision? The answer is no. That while he was in the mikvah, ritual he, he realized, he thought about all the deeds he had done in his life and he realized with everything he had done, the focus had always been on himself in one form or another. It was never selfless. And when he saw his circumcision, something that was done, he was eight days old, he realized he at least had that. It's very hard for a person not to have some arrogance, and a little bit you should have. One eighth of an eighth, as they say. But a person needs to know that if you can live your life and we, look, we, we live our lives to emulate God, if God is humble, we need to be humble, but confident. Humble, but confident. And it's, it's a challenge to not go too far in that confidence. But if a person can have that, then all of a sudden he finds that life becomes easier. Because the real truth of the matter is just don't take too much of the responsibility. We're just managers in God's world. And we have to do what God wants of us. But it's still God's world, so how can we possibly be arrogant? May God give us the strength, the wisdom, and the ability to be able to fulfill our mission in life and to not do it with arrogance. God bless and thank you for coming.